All right, to test your comprehension, as well as to solidify your understanding of these t-test concepts, let's do some exercises. All right, so you're welcome to do these exercises with paper and pencil, but you're also fine to do these just in the Jupyter Notebook here. Um, I'm really trying to test your high-level understanding of these concepts as opposed to the specific mathematics. So let's say that you run four additional experiments with your GMO brewing yeast. So earlier, when I first introduced students' single sample t-test, we had four observations. Um, so these first four yields. And we found that that was not statistically significantly different from the 50 liter baseline. But let's say that we now have eight stout yields instead of four. So we've got these additional observations. What is the T statistic now? And is it significantly different from the 50 liter baseline? All right, for exercise two, does the flipper length of Adelie penguins from Dream Island vary significantly by sex. And exercise three, was the heart rate of low-fat dieters different after one minute of rest relative to after 15 minutes of rest? All right, for exercise one, we can use the one sample t-test method, pass in our vector of eight values as the first argument, and pass in our baseline mean as the second argument. And we'll get back that this is now just marginally statistically significant. So we get a T value of 2.4, which corresponds to a P value of 0.044, which is just below 0.05. And so that is statistically significant. So if you were going to write out your result in a kind of formal frequentist statistician way, you might say that the GMO yeast yields a mean of 54.6 liters, which I calculated separately, which is significantly more stout than the baseline process. And you say that my T value is equal to 2.4 with seven degrees of freedom because we subtract one uh, from our seven. Remember, if we know our mean is 54.6, then if we also know seven of these values, so, I mean, let's take this exact scenario. If we have these seven values and we know that the mean of our eight values is 54.6, then this eighth value must absolutely be 62. So it doesn't have any freedom. So we only have seven degrees of freedom. So this is technically how you would report that in the frequentist statistician fashion. And then we would say that the p-value is less than 0.05, which is where we're getting this significant language from. All right, for exercise two, let's have a look, see here, so we can have a box plot here to have a look at the problem. So let's have a look at Dream Island, and we're trying to see if the flipper length for male penguins is significantly longer than the flippers of female penguins. So we can see that it appears to be maybe a little bit longer. Um, so the median is certainly longer for those males. Um, it's interesting, on other islands, the differences are more stark. So on Torgerson Island, for example, it seems quite clear that the males have longer flipper lengths. But on Dream Island, it is less clear. So we can do some tests to see if there is a statistically significant difference. So using the same kind of code as we used earlier in this notebook, we can capture in a vector all of the female flipper lengths and all of the male flipper lengths. And we can see that the female mean is about 188 millimeters, whereas the male mean is longer. It's 192 millimeters. So are these means statistically significantly different? Well, we can use the independent t-test, pass in our two vectors, the female measurements, the male measurements, and we want to use Welch's t-test, so we'll set equal variances to false. That gives us our t and our p-value. So we get a t-statistic of negative 4.6, and that corresponds to a p-value of 1.1 times 10 to the negative 5, 
which is very statistically significant. And if you're finding this a little bit difficult to read, you can convert that p-value into a negative log p-value so that it's a little bit easier to read. And so again, like with exercise one, if you want to phrase this in the frequentist statistician language, you could say something like, on Dream Island, the flippers of male Adelie penguins, which are 192.4 millimeters, are significantly, statistically significantly, longer than those of females, which were 187.8 millimeters, and we have this t-value of 4.6 and a negative log p-value of 5. And so that negative log p-value is coming from here. And you also might be wondering, because we've got a negative t-statistic here. Well, that just has to do with what order you put the female or male in. So if I put m before f here, then we get 4.6 on the positive side. So uh, the direction of that doesn't really matter very much. All right, and finally for exercise three, we're interested in the low-fat dieters at rest. So let's grab just those people from our exercise data frame, put it into this rest low data frame, have a look at the data here. So the question of interest is, are the heart rates of these low-fat dieters at rest significantly different after one minute versus after 15 minutes? So we're comparing these two distributions. And so we can grab those specific values for after minute one and after minute 15. So we see that there is a difference in the means. So the average heart rate is one beat per minute faster after 15 minutes than after one. And we can use the dependent, the paired t-test here to compare whether there is a statistically significant difference. And remember, we can use the paired test because we have an observation from the same person after one minute and after 15 minutes. So we can use that as a pairing to compare against each other here. And when we do that, we get a t-statistic of 2.2, which has a p-value of 0.09. That is above a p-value of 0.05. That is not statistically significant. So we could say in the frequentist statistician language that the heart rate of low-fat dieters did not change significantly after one minute of rest relative to after 15 minutes of rest, we get this t-value and this p-value.